So where were we? Oh yeah, a new government had taken the old one's place and of course, changes were needed. It was up to Fidel to decide who should bring the war criminals and traitors to revolutionary justice. And who better than yours truly? One thing you have to understand is that at this point in time, Fidel, as well as a lot of his men, weren't as communist as everyone thought. On the other hand, Czech couldn't be more communist even if he tried. And yeah, the US didn't really like this. Castro wasn't stupid though, he wasn't going to make enemies with a neighboring megapower after a month or two in charge. He needed to distance himself from Che, so he sent him to all sorts of diplomatic missions around the globe for a few months. The world was to get a glimpse of the charming Cuban revolutionary for the very first time. The Soviets particularly liked Che and he managed to forge an alliance of sorts. Weaponry and oil became plentiful. Upon his return, Ernesto was given several key roles. While Minister of Finances, he signed Cuban banknotes with just Che, wanting to show his indifference towards money. Think of a regular dollar bill. Now think of a dollar bill with bro written in the corner. Not two years had passed and Cuba had nationalized all foreign companies. As you might expect, most of these companies were owned by the US. The Cubans figured it was the only way for them to be independent, as if that's possible. The Americans had had enough. All diplomatic relations were severed and actually still were till 2015. It had been decided, uncontrollable Fidel must be eliminated, along with Che and Raul. The CIA managed to send trained Cuban refugees back to Cuba in an attempt to overthrow Castro. The Cubans, not the US trained Cubans, the Cubans living in Cuba, however fought them off and captured a lot of them. So yeah, a small two-year-old state managed to defy the odds against the most powerful country in the Western world. This so-called Bay of Pigs invasion was kind of an embarrassment for the US at the time. Che sent a letter to Kennedy a couple of days later. Thanks for the Bay of Pigs, before the invasion, the revolution was shaky, now it's stronger than ever. Even some Soviet nukes were to be brought to Cuba. It was no big deal though, except like, the apocalypse that could have happened. But nobody was too keen on a nuclear war, except maybe Che, he was kinda pissed at the Soviets for the whole thing falling apart. To Guevara, liberation from imperialist aggression could have justified a couple of million dead from an atomic war. That's how much Che was passionate about his ideology. Not much later, Che addressed the UN. Inequality really did annoy the crap out of him. How can they do nothing about apartheid rule in South Africa? And how can the Yankee capitalists call themselves saviors of the free world when they manage to discriminate a whole race? But this was merely talk and Guevara knew very well that the only way to spread revolution was to take up arms again. There was a rebellion going on in Congo, so that was his destination. When Ernesto and a couple of his men arrived, the rebel leader had come to meet them, in a speedboat. This wasn't just your ordinary everyday African rebel speedboat though. It was a speedboat with a couple of prostitutes, several bottles of whiskey and a drunk rebel leader in the driving seat. So yeah, things didn't really work out in the Congo. Not enough will from the Congolese people to fight, that was the quoted reason. Like in many of his adventures, Che wrote a diary about his time in the Congo. It began with, this is the history of a failure. Guevara managed to barely escape with his life just 10 months after his arrival, though quite a few of his men weren't as lucky. While he was still in the Congo, Che sent a letter to Fidel. The letter was to be opened in case Che was killed, but since nobody seen or heard from him, Fidel decided to open it anyway and read it to the people. In this letter, Che said his goodbyes to the Cuban people and renounced his Cuban citizenship. His fight there was finished, but his fight for the revolution was not. So now that his letter was made public, he couldn't return to Cuba. Not even for a vacation. A new identity and a ticket for Bolivia. Although he shaved his beard, the CIA still found out where he was. And by this time, the CIA really didn't like Che at all. The Bolivian forests didn't do him any favors either. He didn't get the local support he got in Cuba. Even the communist party there broke his heart. The Bolivian army wasn't really capable of hunting him down. The CIA trained Bolivian army though was more than capable. On October 7th, 1967, they got him. They finally got him. They captured him and awaited instructions. His head held high, Che only asked for something to smoke. The Bolivian president was afraid of Che's influence and figured it was best to just kill him. No shots to the head, Che was to be killed in action. And so he was, tied and unarmed in a barn in the middle of nowhere, died choking on his own blood. He didn't claim he was immortal, he just claimed the revolution was. The world symbol of the possibilities of one man. So next time you see a Che t-shirt, don't just think, meh, think about a doctor determined to change the world, even if it meant dying for his beliefs. 
Be sure to like and share the video if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next week!